I was following a lot of the debate that's been going on in Rome. And while I, I avoid trying to get caught up in, in commenting on the politics of the situation because I don't think I'm going to add anything positive to it. There was something that was being discussed and I think it was the new uh, Archbishop who is the Cardinal, soon to be Cardinal Doctrine of the Faith, uh, Victor Manuel Fernandez, I think. Uh, there's been a lot, lot said to him, but I think he said, or somewhere in the discussion it said, that it's Christ that saves, not doctrine. That it's not, it's doc, the doctrine is not going to save us, but Christ. And I was there, there thinking about this discussion that's been going on in the last number of days. Um, you know, there, there are people that I've known that have written dozens of theology books, reflections on doctrine and so, and so forth, and have turned out to have known Christ very little. Not to judge them, it's just to say, you know, we can know the faith well, but do we know Christ well? You know, do we know him and I take, for example, the, the point, the doctrine of transubstantiation. Now, nowhere am I going to deny the dogma and the doctrine, the teaching, the scholastic teaching of transubstantiation. But if you're trying to give that doctrine to somebody today that doesn't know the church well, and doesn't know the faith well, you will lose them. And, they, and you might make them understand the doctrine they may come to believe the doctrine. But what really captivates people is the encounter with Christ. And it's a living encounter with Christ. And once you encounter this living encounter with Christ, that you can know that you can have a personal relationship with your God, where you can have a conversation in prayer, and Christ will open up, you know, that amazing encounter. Because the faith is not, the, is not just all up here is the formation of the heart. You know, it's the whole reason. I, uh, that's why I think Christ revealed his sacred heart in Pere Le Monial, because it's all about the heart. And we seem to have forgotten in this discussion on the faith, the formation of the heart. You know, people that are suffering, you know, have you allowed your heart to be formed? Really important, really, really important to work on your heart, uh, especially in the faith. And I think this is, you know, if we, if we did this better in the church, more people would believe if, if our hearts were in the faith. You know, I was just thinking, I was, I was driving this evening, wasn't planned to be driving, but I was just driving this evening. And I was just thinking of, um, you know, in the Liturgies of Christ, we had a founder, Father Marcel, and his heart wasn't formed. You know, we can look back on that man. He might have known the faith. He might have defended the faith, but he didn't live it. it, did, it did, he didn't live it with his heart. There was a lot of issues in his life. And that's sadly what happens to some people in the church. They may know the faith. They may defend the faith. They might appear traditional and wear cassocks and, and so forth, but their hearts are not formed. And you can, and you, and I think our Lord is allowing all of this stuff to happen in the church over the last number of years to form our hearts better, to form our hearts better in the faith. And again, I hear I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not saying that I'm not for a moment saying, you know, trying to say or advocate that we change doctrine or so forth. But the first encounter you have to have in the faith is the is the encounter of the heart with Christ. And we have to embody that. We have to be those other Christs. We have to show um, you know, people that this faith means something to us, that our hearts are in it. And then they might be curious enough to know, OK, well, this guy is so convinced, he's so convicted, there must be something there. You know, and they might take that step forward of encountering Christ that himself. Um, so... You know, I think it's important for us bloggers, not, you know, to, to give an honest, an honest discussion on the faith that isn't so vitriolic and just divisive and angry because people look at us and say, well, God, you guys are so divided and so angry. Uh, do, do I really want to be part of this church? We need to, we need to embody Christ 
and give his his teaching the way he acted so that people can see well look if you so if you really believe in this Jesus Christ that you profess to believe in you know sh show it and the only way you can really show your belief is with your life your life has to be transformed and that's the whole thing about the faith being a way el camino uh, that's why you know the um Kikuar Gueo and and Jose, Jose Maria Escriva, both of them talk about El Camino, the way. Um, because it, it has to be a way of life. It has to be something transformative. Um, I think it's a fascinating time to be Catholic. I really do. I keep, I'll keep saying it. If you ever want to see saints raised up in the church, this will be the time when you will have saints in the church like never before. Because it will form people. It will form you like never before because you'll you'll go into the faith you'll love the faith you'll know the faith like never before and we have to be leaders in that area and so i'm encouraging people know your faith but go into prayer and and know you're encountering christ living present you know waiting there to have a conversation with you that's the i mean i spent nine years in the seminary and i don't think i ever had a prayer life that really captivate my heart i had experiences i always believed in the eucharist i was always i always knew but i didn't have i didn't have a prayer life like i have now like they're t totally transformed and we you know we have to be leading people now on that that path of discipleship of you know purgative uh, illuminative of unitive you know the 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 process of of growing near to Christ. I always was fascinated when I went to the Orthodox in Mount Athos. You know, you'd see them, the older monks forming the other monks, going through their 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 the path of um, you know spiritual life of um, of um, the the ascetic spiritual life that they would have had. You know, leading them on the path, talking it out, having different conferences. I was always fascinated by you know that that really um, thorough um, search for Christ that they had. You know, you you read it in the Pilgrim, that Orthodox book. And I think us Catholics sometimes we get so caught up in our scholastic doctrinal definitions that we forget we're talking about Christ. We have to bring his living presence into our spiritual life. And so, so that's the encouragement I want to give people, you know. Know that prayer is that personal encounter with Christ. We used to, this used to be told to me and I never understood it. I never how can you have a personal encounter with Christ? Well, it's very simple. It's letting go. It's emptying yourself. It's getting rid of your resentments, your fears, your anxieties, your shames and everything. And letting yourself be transformed. It's beautiful. Beautiful. I'm really looking forward to Loch Derg. I'm looking forward to the time of prayer now in the next couple of days. I'm really, my whole mind is, 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 is in that space now. I just want the time, the silence, the prayer. I love the silence. I just can't wait. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. But I want to give that encouragement to others. That's why I blog. So that people will know that there's hope. In your depressions. In your fears. If you're suffering from suicidal thoughts. Or anything like this. I don't know. I can't solve that. But Christ can. He can do it. He will do it. If you put your faith and your trust in him. He transforms. And that's why I blog. To lead you to go to the source, go to the well, go to Christ and encounter him. Because I'm, I'm convinced and I'm convicted in what I believe in. And I know that he will do the same to you. Anyway, God bless you. As I said, I'm in luck, Derek. If you want to come last minute tomorrow, I know it's called the Men of St. Joseph's, but anybody can come along. You know, anybody that's over 16, I think, come along tomorrow. Just come along, be there on the islands before 2 p.m., you know, just come along. You, you'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy it. It's it's a great time for prayer, for peace. Peace. If you're not Catholic, you're looking at my video because this is a strange thing. People, some people will look like if you're not Catholic. Come to Loch Derg and experience something different that you've never seen before. Or if you're a lapsed Catholic, come to Loch Derg. Google it. Loch Derg in 
the Donegal Loch Derg. Not there's another Loch Derg somewhere else, but there's a it's the sanctuary, St. Patrick's St. Patrick's Purgatory, it's called. Go to Loch Derg. You'll you'll find something fascinating. Uh, and you never know what God will do in your life because he is real and he wants to get in there. But he respects our freedom. But if you give your will to Christ, he'll he'll heal you. He'll help you. Anyway, God bless you. Take care. Bye bye.